Tonight we've got a great show. We're talking about massage therapy after plastic surgery. We call it perioperative therapy. I have Pam Papard, our massage therapist I've been working with for the last 10 years. And she's seen essentially every patient of mine in that last decade because we use perioperative therapy for every patient. Pam, thank you so much. <laughs> it's been great working with you these last 10 years. Hope the next 10 are equally as enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say that I have more comments over the years about how beneficial the work you has been you have done for patients, particularly if they've had some challenges with tissue healing or things have been mm -hmm. stiff. And it has, it, it's because of you and my experience. At first, I certainly didn't use uh, perioperative massage for every patient, but now even a rhinoplasty, I have patients see you for that initial lymphatic massage. Okay. So I just wanna give you a personal thank you for that. Sure, thank you. The minute they go into a state of trauma, the body goes on autopilot. There's certain things that are gonna happen. Um, one of the things is a swelling issue. You can't stop it from happening. It is the autopilot, but there are certain things we can do to either trick it or not let it go as to the maximum that it could. And that's where we talk about the five things they have control over. Uh, because the rest of this you don't. You just gotta let the time take it. Absolutely. Um, right off the bat, I would advise the Arnica Montana, which is the natural herb that helps with the bruising, swelling, and pain management. Um, I personally would like it if they did it pre, yep. um, not just post. Yep. So it's kind of like saturation, saturation of the body. Um, tons of fluid, what fluids they can drink and what I don't want them touching. Anything that acts so like lots a, of Gatorade, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. No, um, no, because there's too much sodium. Uh, and that's the next thing is the salt is such a huge factor, um, huge factor. It takes virtually nothing to throw your body into that tizzy and you will feel it within 10 minutes of getting it. You're going to go, I feel that expansion. Um, and on big cases, it's not comfortable. Sometimes it's outright painful. So if we can keep it to a minimum, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, fluid wise, you know, anything that we can use as a diuretic that adds to the situation to help back it off, please do. Um, activity level within reason and then the lymph work. As long as they can do it preferably every single day, I would be thrilled. And so you're starting that lymph work with a, with a full session? Full session. I show them how to do it um, and we field any questions. I mean, I, I want them leaving that first day not scared to touch somebody's body. So you're starting with lymphatic massage. That might be the very next day. So many times it is the very mm -hmm. next morning. Right. Uh, we'll see them back, or if they stay overnight in our surgery center, we'll see them that very next day. Uh, talk about that progression from lymphatic, how that moves along in the early phase, and how that shifts as time goes on, as the weeks go by. Uh, usually, the first two to three weeks, it's it's pretty much get the fluids off. When they kind of understand and understand what their body's doing and how it reacts to certain things, and we kind of get the hang of this. Three weeks out, it hits kind of a flux state where we're looking for healed and sealed. We're looking for way less fluids where I start actually seeing rib cages and hip bones showing up. I'm going, oh my God, we're losing a lot of this. Um, it's just kind of, and it depends on each person. Not everybody's at the same stage. So two to three weeks out, we're looking at certain things going stiffness of tissue, um, anything. How is the incisions looking? Uh, are they looking like they're a really fast healer? Where if there's somebody is a fast healer, then I've got to go, oh, we're way ahead of schedule. I got to look at make sure we don't overheal. Uh, and at that point, we integrate more stretching and or foam rollers and whatever else. If it's happening slowly, we got to let them hang out. I mean, it's, we got to go at the pace. Okay. You would do a rub it, and what it's going to do is give me the suction on the tissue that I need and a glide. If everything is good and we don't have to worry about too much about sticking of tissue, we we're talking about the overhealing, I would get a typical glide just right through the tissue. So you can see it. I don't can you know see how it comes through? Like, yeah, just it suctions. Uh, you can see the dome of tissue mm -hmm. pulling. It's, it's the suction that's pulling the tissue. So what's it doing? It's doing two things. It's bringing new blood through the tissue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not on this long enough to go all the way through the muscle tissue. I am only affected with soft tissue, which is what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is it's telling me what's going on on the inside. If she has overhealed, um, you'll, ha you'll feel a hang up. I won't get an easy glide. It's like hitting a brick wall and it will just stop. Uh, tissue that's not been affected in any way will have just a suction. You'll just feel it. Tissue that we've done something to and it's overhealed, I will have the potential of a pinch sting sensation and we just sit there until it goes away. And usually, once it goes away, we don't have to go back. And if I didn't get everything, and let's say I got 80% of it, we would go back a second time. Or I send cups home and let you do the rest of it. But it's just a gliding through the tissue. And this feels actually pretty good. 
Now I'm going to go closer to an incision site. And that's pretty good. And it does slow down. And it sticks. I don't have a movement. So I would sit here for a little while. And we chit chat. How about whatever you want to talk about? Chickens. Chickens. Tomatoes. Whatever. Greenhouses. <laughs> Gardens. <laughs> What'd you have for dinner? We do, I, or along with that, we do talk a lot about food. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And make sure everybody knows what, because when, when I say low sodium, everybody goes, so what do I eat? So I'm not using a salt shaker. I don't, I don't have a lot of sodium. Yeah. Nothing in a package. Nothing in a package. Um, our team here really all together enjoys partnering with patients like you become essentially part of our family. Um, that is our kind of our mission. Our goal is to partner with patients on their journey for self-improvement and their journey to become their personal best. And that partnership is very important to us. That is where this education is something that is important for us to bring to you. And I just thank you for watching and participating. Do send in your questions even after the show here. If you're watching this recorded, we will get to and answer those questions. And you can always reach us uh, at our website, coloradoplasticsurgery.com, and all of our social media channels at Denver Body Doc. That includes Facebook, of course, Instagram, and Snapchat. All right, thank you very much. Enjoy your journey. Good night.